What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, I want to bring you a beginner's guide to the world of Keyforge. You see, when I started playing the Final Fantasy TCG, I made a beginner's guide video, and it was initially not terribly popular. And then a weird thing happened over, over the course of months, to be honest with you. It, it just kind of got pretty steady and kept going, and it seems like there's a little bit of an appetite for these videos introducing you to games. And I thought, well, Keyforge is pretty gosh darn awesome, and if I was getting into Keyforge right now, I would want to know a good place to start, so I figured, right, maybe I should bring you a video. So Keyforge then, what is Keyforge? It is the first ever unique deck game. And what I mean by that is you do not buy packs, open cards, and then construct a deck like you would in a traditional TCG like Pokemon or Magic. What you do is you buy a deck, and that is your deck. You have one deck of 36 cards, and you have to play that deck as it is, and you are not allowed to swap cards in or out. And the way we make sure you don't swap cards in or out is that every deck has a unique name. We call it the Archon, essentially your character. And every card has the name of the Archon printed on the card. Yes, as a side note to begin, that means that if you break one of your cards, that is it, your deck is gone. In the middle of a tournament, a judge will issue you with a proxy, but if you wreck one of your cards, your precious deck is essentially done, and you cannot play it anymore. That's, that's kind of terrifying. So instead of opening boosters looking for particular cards to put in your deck, you are opening decks looking for particular combos and strategies, and looking for a mixture of 36 cards, that will give you a chance to win. Now, for those of you wondering, when we play Keyforge, there's many different variants. This is a beginner's guide. I'll probably do a video about all the different ways to play later. But as a side note, to begin, there are basically two ways to play. Archon is where you bring your best deck. Sealed is where you open a deck and that is what you play with. Now when I say a deck, it could be you open free and you out of the tournament when you lose of all three. It could be you open free, select one and play with it. There's different variants. But essentially there is Archon where you bring your best deck and there is Sealed where you open a deck and play with it right there. So if you don't want to spend ages looking for the very best deck ever, I feel confident saying this is the best deck card game to just play sealed. Now there is also such a format as reversal. Reversal is amazing. In reversal you basically pick your worst deck and then instead of playing with the deck you took every round, you play against the deck you took every round. I did a video about choosing a deck for reversal. I will pop a link to that video in the description. So in Keyforge initially we had seven houses. We had Brobna, the big fighty steampunk inspired house. We had Logos, the sciencey house that draws lots of extra cards. We've got Shadows, the thieves who steal lots of amber. We'll see what amber is in a moment. Sanctum are the religious sect, so to speak, that like to protect themselves and have lots of armor. This is a beginner's guide. I am massively simplifying it. Mars, we've got the aliens who do lots of tricksy stuff. Dis are the demons who like to, well, disrupt you and stop you doing what you want to do. And Untamed are the kind of forest creature house that at least initially were great at rushing for amber. And essentially, when you open a deck, what you get is 36 cards. And you get three houses picked, essentially at random. And in each of those three houses, you get 12 cards essentially picked at random. There are common, uncommon, rare cards that pop up more or less often, but it's not like in a traditional TCG where you get X number of common, uncommon, and rares in a pack. It's just three houses and 36 cards, 12 cards from each house. Now, the decks are actually put together using an algorithm, which is incredibly complicated, but it does various things. So there are some cards that are so good 
you will only ever get one copy of them in a deck. And there are other cards like Binding Irons, for instance, is a very good card. It is limited to two per deck. There are other cards that always appear together, never appear together, etc. Speaking of rarity, there are special rares in the deck, so there are some cards that always appear together. So, for instance, there is a Time Traveller card, which will always appear with help from Future Self. They are a pair of cards that are bound together, and you can get two Time Travellers, they're very rare, but you could but you would then get to help from future self. Whereas there are other very rare cards, like Master of One, for instance, which is a special rare, but it's not linked to anything else. It's just very rare. So special cards could either be linked, or they could just be rarer than your average rare card. Now, so far, we've had three expansions of Keyforge. It launched back in November 2018 with Call of the Archons, which was your traditional base set that just introduced you to the game. Flash forward to May 2019, and we get Call of the Archons. For anyone that's wondering, it is a fairly set thing. We get a set, or at least we've been told we're going to, November, May, November, May, November, May. We get a set every six months. Now, Age of Ascension didn't really do very much. We did have some new mechanics. So there were things like Alpha, cards that had to be played at the beginning of your turn, and Omega, cards that essentially ended your turn when you played them. But it didn't bring in any huge new changes to the game. It was a very classic kind of second consolidating set. But then in November 2019, we got Worlds Collide. And Worlds Collide did a couple of things that were very, very new. Firstly, it introduced two new houses. The Grand Star Alliance, who are your spacefaring race. And they've got lots of upgrades that are linked to characters, as an example. And the Saurian Republic, who are ancient wise dinosaurs. Who have some of their own mechanics which are linked into them. Which are probably beyond the scope of this video. And there was a rotation, so in Worlds Collide, we said goodbye to Mars and Sanctum for now, and we replaced them with the Grand Star Alliance and the Saurian Republic. That is not a permanent change. The houses will be rotating in and out as we go through new sets in the future. Houses will go away, come back, there'll be new houses, etc. The other thing brought in by Worlds Collide were anomaly cards, which are cards essentially from future sets. They bring in mechanics which do not exist in the game at the moment. So if we take a look at something like Valukanth, it refers to when the tide is high. The tide is not a mechanic in Keyforge at the moment. It might be in the future. The other cool thing about anomalies are that they do not belong to any house. So you could get Valukanth as a Brobnar card, or a Saurian card, or a Discard. Not a Mars card, because Mars aren't in Worlds Collide. Boo! I do love Mars. Now, in terms of the basic rules of the game, and we are going basic rules, I've done a full Learn to Play. I'll pop a link in the description. But essentially, the way you win in Keyforge is not by destroying all of your opponent's creatures, like in so many other card games. What you have to do is forge free keys. So essentially, in the game, you have to gain Amber. When you've gained six Amber, at the beginning of your turn, you forge a key. When you forge three keys, you have won the game. First of three keys wins. Now, again, I'm bringing you the simple version. Amber can be gained by playing cards. Some cards have an amber bonus. So that time traveler card we mentioned earlier, when you play it, you gain an amber. But your creatures that you play during the game, you have a couple of options. You can fight to take out your opponent's creatures. Or you can reap, and as a general rule, when you reap with a creature, you gain one amber. Again, as with all of this, there are exceptions. It gets very complicated. It's a card game. But essentially, you play creatures, and you can either destroy your opponent's creatures or reap for amber. And there's this real decision to be made as to when you try and control your opponent's creatures to stop them reaping, and when you reap yourself. Now, we also have upgrades that make your creatures more powerful or give them new abilities. We have action cards, which are single-use cards that do something. And we've got artifacts, which are essentially permanent actions that sit there on your field for you to use during your turn. 
One of the coolest things about Keyforge is that during your turn, you choose an active house. And during your turn, you may play any cards from your hand you like of the active house. There's no resource here. You just get to play whatever you like. You can use any cards already in play of the active house. And you may discard any cards from your hand that you like that are of the active house. So you pick one of your free houses every turn. And you can essentially do what you like, but only within that house. And the other two houses are, for want of a better phrase, resting. Now, at the end of your turn, you always draw until you've got six cards in hand. That means that the game tends to be quite fast-flowing. It's very It happens, but it's very rare in Keyforge that you sit there turn after turn with nothing to do. Unless your opponent's got a really good disruption deck. Because you're always refilling your hand at the end of your turn. And because during your turn, you can, even if you don't want to play cards, you can discard them from your hand if they're of the active house. And just like in the Transformers TCG, there's no deck out mechanic here. When you run out of cards in your deck, your discard pile gets shuffled up and becomes your deck. Now in terms of organized play, Keyforge for a game which is a year old is absolutely, inarguably crushing it they are absolutely brilliant when it comes to organized play they've got an entire organized play pyramid which goes from chain bound tournaments right at the very bottom that's your little local tournaments where you turn up and you can get yourself a little bit of swag all the way up through store championships prime championships grand championships just moving on up essentially and then off to the side there are vault tours where essentially they're not in the main organized play pyramid, and what you generally do is compete for a large amount of what we call ambushars, which are the currency at tournaments that you use to essentially buy whatever it is you want in terms of swag. But a couple of months ago, they actually announced a second strand of organized play, separate from the current strand, where you're largely playing for swag. It is the Vault Warrior tournaments, where you're actually playing for for cash prizes again i've done a video about the vault warrior tournament so i'll pop a link in the description so if you want to learn more about that you can go down watch that video and you'll get a much better sense than you would from just a couple minutes in this video but the point is they are getting ready to launch a second strand of organized play with cash prizes as well so you've basically got two full strands of organized play tournaments and vault tours on the side organized play is ridiculous ridiculously healthy and we're already seeing tournaments with a couple hundred people or more turning up which for a game this small and this new is weird and it's not actually that small looking at the hobby channel in the most recent rankings it's actually the third most successful game having jumped over Yu-Gi-Oh! This is just in the hobby channel. In the mass channel, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still winning. It does push Keyforge down to number four. But the game is only a year old. It is absolutely crushing it. I've done a bunch of videos, all things Keyforge. I will link a few of them in the description for you to learn more. But if you've got any specific questions, chuck them down in the comment section, and I'm sure myself or someone else will get to them shortly. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's Keyforge. It's a brilliant game. Jump on in and honestly, just go buy two decks and start playing. You don't need to build a deck. There's no deck construction. Go and buy yourself two decks and that is everything you need to get rolling. There are actually a lot of counters going on, but you can always use pens and paper if you don't want to get the counters. Maybe buy the two player starter set. That's got everything in. Actually, I should mention before we finish, you don't really have promos or extra products with keyforge like you do with other games it's just decks there are official play mats that you can buy and game genic have done a great little range of deck boxes etc i've also done a video opening all of them i'll link it in the description but you're not going to need to go and buy a bunch of special promo boxes to get these particular promo cards that cannot be got elsewhere that is not how the game works so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you play Keyforge at the moment, tell me what you think about it. Tell me how much you love it in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. If you don't play Keyforge, have I done a good job convincing you? And if not, what can I do to help? Go nuts in the comment section, but please do remember the rule. 
be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, where we talk KeyForge, but a whole bunch of other games as well. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.